Welcome to part 5 of my trial to um, create a new mandate in AX7. Uh, this uh, part will cover the whole VAT and uh, VAT section basically. I just put it in brackets also sales tax, just um, that everyone understands from what I'm talking about. Good. Um, perfect. So the whole sales tax um, logic is basically yeah, there we need to have um, at least a small um, knowledge about how the sales tax is um, built up or how the sales tax logic um, is in AX. Uh, so basically the easiest thing is just by doing it over um, a matrix itself. So this means um, the whole matrix or the whole VAT is actually a matrix based. So it means actually nothing else than you have um, two kind of different things. You have the customer respectively vendor information information on one hand and on the other hand you have the item information. Good. So let's say okay. Anyhow, so perfect. So here on this axis we add the customer uh, information, or the vendor information, and down here would be actually the item information that is available. So this means actually nothing else than you just need to think about well what different kind of VAT you have. So normally you have a kind of um, one or two or three different uh, local VAT VAT um, percentages and then maybe also kind of um, <coughs> kind of um, export import of course and maybe also for the European Union um, the the European Union sales. <laughs> Good. Um, so basically, let's start with the customer and the vendor information. So you just need to think about what is the split of it that you should have in the end. So this means mm, basically nothing else than you just need to think, well, okay, um, I'm, I'm a German mandate. So this means I just say, well, customers, DE, so CDE for customer, Germany or C DOM would also be a possible for customer domestic. I add also C EU for, of course, just quickly say for a European Union customers and I say C um, ROW for foreign or rest of world customers. And basically the same for the vendors. So V DOM, V EU, and V um, rest of world. I'm going to add actually just um, German uh, metrics, how it could look like in the end, um, or I'm not even sure about, 100% sure about the percentages there, but um, because I can also add the Swiss one, but anyhow, um, good. So this means nothing else. You just need to think now, well, okay, you have customer domestic and just start with that. So what kind of different possible percentages you have and it's quite often it is that you have a kind of a full rate so just uh, the normal percentage but in some cases you also have a reduced rate and a zero rate in the end um, yeah so this is basically quite normal in the European Union you should also add service because in most of the countries you need to the declare the service intercommunity sales and also the material which would be full um, intercommunity sales. Good. So now it is basically just a kind of a matrix that you say, well, okay, if I have if I'm uh, you have, you have, if I have a domestic customer and a normal item which has the normal full rate, what should it be? So uh, in the case of Germany it should be then the normal let's say sales. So S for sales, um, in here it's the VET code actually, sales um, full. I would not add the percentages because they can be changed actually. You can say, well, okay, if I have a domestic customer and the reduced rate, so 7%, then it should be S reduced VET code. Here as zero service, then yeah, we can say SG, so sales goods full, sales goods reduced, sales goods zero, and sales service full. Good. 
Um, so those are the VAT codes. So this means nothing else than we have here the VAT codes. This one is actually called VAT group. And this one is called item VAT group. <clears throat> Good. So we have already those four codes. Um, CEU plus full would mean actually nothing else than S. So sales, goods, EU, basically already good. Reduced things are normally with the same with exactly the same code because you don't have anyways um, any kind of VAT there, but you still need to declare it. And then SSEU for sales of services within the European country. Good. Um, rest of world, rest of world would then be just export so sales export for basically all of them normally you don't need to distinguish between um, the normal goods rate for goods and service rates for, uh, within rest of world um, companies uh, rest of world things so this means we have here in the end just some new codes which we are going to add and then basically the same for the vendors so we have p for purchase goods, full, um, purchase of goods with the reduced rate, purchase of goods with a zero rate, and we have purchase of service, um, full, whatever. I can also, call, let's, let's call it this way, that we really see that it is service. Good. So, okay. Perfect. So um, V E U. So those are normally reversed text within the European Union. So this means nothing else than an in and out game where you just post in and out. Good. So in here also the distinction just between purchase of goods within the EU, and it's the same for those two, and the purchase of service within the European Union and the rest would be then purchase import. Good. So this means we have here those codes as well. Good. So it's basically just a kind of a definition of um, how the metrics should look like. In AX it is always the case that you were working with um, with VAT groups and item VAT groups because as soon as you purchase or sale, sell something you have both information available and the VAT codes in here are automatically retrieved then actually. Good. Um, so it's really just creation of the of the information. So what do we need? We need to have the percentage. So sale of goods full would be 19%. Reduced would be 7%. Zero would be 0%. Service would be um, 19%. Yep. Um, goods EU sales of goods EU will be. 0% sales goods EU will be 0%, export will be 0%. Um, now I miss those here actually. Yep. Means nothing else than if I go and add in here and post, put those up here. Good. Um, in the end, you would also be able to use here both two times the same if you don't need to declare it, but anyhow. So 19% reduced of purchase will be this, 7, 0, service, purchase of service would be 19%. Um, purchase of goods within the EU would be 19%, but reversed text. And the same for service and import would be 0%. Good. Okay, um, of course you need to have a VET account, basically. So it means in the end nothing else than you can just choose any kind of account. Um, sales sales would be receivables, so VET receivables in the end. So 11400, for example, for all of them. Within the EU, it would be in the end actually nothing. 
So basically nothing that needs to be added here. We need to have anyways as well. I add it just in here, but it just won't post on that. Good. Um, okay, the purchase uh, will be kind of payables. Yep, so 22000, 22000000, 22000000. And the purchase of goods within the EU would need to have basically 11407 for example and then reversed 22009 and the same is valid for those so just an in and out game on the on the receivables and the payables in the end and the import again yeah so those are just the main accounts you can add them out you ever you want plus the settlement account which is also needed in this case let's say 22009 for all of them. Bah. So, and good. Perfect. So, this is just what you need to define in the beginning because uh, before you can start to uh, create your VAT logic. But now, since we have it right now, we can actually just start. So, we start with the VAT group. So, just the vendors and customer information, which means nothing else than we can go into AX. And in AX itself, there is new that there is a separate tax section. And yeah, so just for the VAT, there you can go to the setup and then you can say, well, sales tax. And then you can actually start with the tax group, um, sales tax group. Um, yeah. As I said, I didn't have that much look as I haven't. So it's also more or less more or less my first time where I see um, AX7. Therefore, it is always kind of a case that I also have to um, look if there is or to find the things. Um, but let's see. Set up here, not here, not posting. Nope. Um, tax again. Set up. Sales tax. The parameters like sales tax exempt codes sales tax reporting tax exempt number legend posting blah 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 tax group default rules gst relief group my my god um indirect taxes ah, pff, okay so it's under indirect taxes sales tax and then sales tax group okay so this means we just start actually with the sales tax groups and the sales tax groups is nothing else than um those here which we need to create so this means in the end nothing else then we can just click on new and we can say c um dom so customer domestic good um basically we don't add here the setup yet um because yeah we will um, start with the thing in the we will do it in the end Good, um, we add just all of them that we had. So CEU, customers, Europe, Euro, European Union. Good, uh, not control and N, always alt and N. C row for customer rest of world or foreign customers, alt and N. Vendor, dom, uh, vendors, domestic. V U for vendors European Union and V R O W for vendor rest of world. Good. Um, so we basically have now our six our six in here that we had before as well, and we now just move on with the item that group just to create the master data so this means nothing else then back again here to tax in this case item sales tax groups good uh, and you for full full rate alt and n service for service rate alt and n for red reduced rate Alt and N zero for zero rate. Good. Okay. So um, we have now here 
those two things of the matrix already available. What we need now is, of course, that we need to create the VET codes as well. So this means the VET codes itself are just here, then under the sales tax codes or VAT codes. And now I just need to go and add one after another. Um, as you can see here, there are some things which are uh, needed. So we need to create them at first. So the settlement period and the ledger posting group. So this means before we start with the sales tax codes, uh, we are going to add those informations as well. So those are on the setup as I saw them on the setup. And then at first, let's start with the ledger posting groups. I actually normally create two just to ensure that in the end um, the postings are correct. So I just create one for um, for sales. Um, S for sales VAT. Good. Uh, and I create also a new one for P VAT for purchase VAT or respectively of yeah, uh, receivable payable would also be would also be possible good so um, means nothing else and I need to have the main accounts of course as well creating a main account was already shown quite often so I can go to general ledger and in the general ledger chart of account and accounts and main accounts Good, I can click on new and I just need to create actually those one, two, four, five accounts. So this means nothing else, one, one, four, zero, zero. This is that receivable. So basically the one from sales. It is a balance sheet account and um, that's fine. Um, Control and S to save it. Do it not, it's not necessarily needed actually because what we have to add here is the type VAT. And if you add here the posting type VAT, then it is anyways not possible um, to post manually manually on it. Just it, you always need to have a VAT code to post onto this main account. So in the end, it's nothing else than if you add here the posting type VAT, it means that uh, in the end you have to go over the VAT subledger to post onto this account. Anyways, good. So we create the new, the second one, the one one four zero seven. This would be the um, VAT um, VAT receivable from intra intra community. So basically, from European Union, it is a balance sheet account, and here as well, the posting type has to be wet VAT. Yeah. VAT. Good. Okay. The next one would be 22000. This would be the VAT payables. Also a profit and loss in a balance sheet account. And what have I done now? I switched the view now somehow. I, li I like this view, but I don't know what I, how I got to this actually. But there is somehow then the option to change to grid view, um, detail view. No. Um, how can I switch it back? Maybe. This way here. Yep. And then I should be able to say two two zero 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 no two two zero zero this one here edit <laughs> um good question is it this one here open new window nope <laughs> okay yeah as you can see it's also more or less my first time in um, AX7. So <laughs> please forgive me if I make also some kind of uh, mistakes or some things that I don't know why something happens or <laughs> whatever. With a double click? No. With, 
um, no. So I, there was some kind of some kind of combination. Um, yeah, just one sec. I will try it out. I will move on later on when I found. Mm. So found it. Um, it was actually quite simple. Actually, uh, I actually thought that this function is missing, but of course it is available. Fortunately, so under the options button, yeah, of course there needs to be some something in it. So you can also you can change here the grid view to the detailed view, which is actually great because I really thought that this thing is missing um, because I haven't seen it up to now. But under the options button, it is then available. And then I can go and say here, balance sheet account and of course also VAT. Perfect. So I have already four of them available, three of them. I need the next one, 22007, which is VAT payables, uh, intracom unity, intracom. It is a balance sheet account and also the posting type that. plus the VAT settlement account, which is also a balance sheet account and also the posting type that. Okay, good. So we have them, which means nothing else than we can now go and we can add them into the, into the ledger posting groups, which means those are here. So this means nothing else than I switch to edit and I say purchase vet. So purchase vet is vet from purchase means nothing else than it is receivable. So VAT receivable. So this means nothing else than I add here just the vet receivable account, which is this one here. Yep. And the settlement account, which is 22009. Good. And those two here, so use tax expense and use tax payables for the European Union at least, exactly those two which needs to be added for the reversed tax. So in this case, the 11407 and the 22007. Good. Because I've create, I'm creating two groups, I don't have to add here the sales tax payable because it is just for purchase. Sales. Did I forgot to add it in the 22009? It seems so. So this means I, so as you can see here, he's saying that um, the, the type needs to be, the type needs to be VAT or sales tax. So this means nothing else than 11400 as well. I'm quite sure I've added it there, but let's see. Chart of account, accounts, uh, main account. Yeah, I need to delete as well, and here as well. Maybe he's, he has problems because I said VAT and not VAT and not. Um, because said VAT and not um, sales tax, but actually I thought it's the same type, just a different kind of language. So British English and the American English. But anyhow, so then I guess there will be also one available, which is sales tax. Service tax. It was always this one here. Um, Definitely sure that it was always this one. Let's try sales tax. Hmm. India sales tax, no. Sales tax, sales tax is not available. It was always VAT, it was definitely always VAT. Maybe another, maybe another bug. Just um, never lecture. Um, I just repeat it. It is just a technical preview. Um, this version of AX7, so it is quite possible. So it is definitely possible that it's just kind of an error. But here is sales tax, so sales tax is available. So it needs to be this type. Why? 
ever ok sales tax and then I just change it to sales tax and 114 then as well to sales tax and here as well to sales tax good ok so now I should be able to add it to it so this means in the section tax setup sales tax ledger posting groups and then edit and here 11400 11407220072009 and yeah perfect and on the sales side we just add the 22000 no receivable no use tax no use tax just the settlement account so as well the 22009 good what else we need to add the um, the yeah. we need to add the settlement the settlement periods in the end. So this means nothing else than maybe also somewhere here settlement periods. Yeah, okay. Um, we can say mon for monthly. So you're going to do it uh, monthly. As you can see, we also need to have an authority. So since we cannot jump anymore, or I cannot, or I didn't find out how to jump uh, at the moment to it, um, I just need to create the sales tax authority. Or that's this way, and I say DE for Germany. Good. Okay. Um, you can actually directly add here a vendor account so basically just the vendor account of the authority which means uh, AX will then post automatically at the time of the VAT payments um, an open vendor transaction onto this vendor in the end so this means we're going to add it uh, later on when we're doing the sales tax payment for the moment we can just leave it blank and we can go back to the sales tax settlement periods good new one mon monthly because the other one was not saved of course i add here the authority uh, terms of payment ju does just matter if we create it then directly for the moment not and i can say month i'm going to do it for each month so once a month i'm going to pay my sales tax good okay um so we need to create the periods so i can say new period interval but of course I need to add here the first one. So first of January 15 to 31st, 31st of January. Yep, um, 31st of January, day, uh, month, day. One, three, good. Okay, and now I can just say I want to create a new one. And then I just create some until the end of 2016 maybe. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So um, this means now we can move on and create really the sales tax code. This time, this means we can click on new, and then I just go into my Excel and just create all those VAT codes. So SG full for sales goods full rate. I add the settlement period, which is monthly. I add it. It is sales, so if there is an S and here is an S, then it is the S vet. Yep, it is in Euro, that's fine. And I can then save it and somewhere. Yep, okay. And now I just need to add here actually also the percentage. So this means I can just go in here, sales tax code, and I can say values, which means nothing else than in here I can say 19%. Yeah, if there would be a new rate, then you can just create a new line and say from 1st of January 2018 to, I don't know, it will be 27% um, because they just enlarged the, or hired the, um, not hired, <laughs> made the percentage higher in the end. Good. Okay, so we have the first one. We create now all of them. So reduced, so sales, goods, reduced rate. Um, settlement period as well monthly and the ledger the ledger is the ledger posting group is as well sales tax code values the reduced one is seven percent i can go back and i can create a new one sg zero 
um, sales goods, sales goods zero rate. So basically just for the domestic customers, which don't have kind of a VAT number or just just don't need to pay VAT, but of course it is not used for any kind of foreign transactions because this would be the export. Zero is of course fine. Uh, the next would be SGEU. So sales goods Euro, European Union. Also the settlement period monthly, it is also um, an S and S as sir, I guess I call it like this. So sales service, sales service um, domestic would this be? So with the full rate, I say monthly and I say also sales, and I say new S service EU. So sales service Euro, Euro, European. Union settlement period monthly ledger also still sales two four six so we have the export so sales export settlement period monthly ledger posting group that's also fine two four six seven two three four five six seven perfect so we can do exactly the same for the purchase so p full a P G full purchase goods full settlement period as well monthly and it will be the P bet so because there is a P and there is a P it needs to be P as well good um I do the rest I just make a break uh, good so I've created all of them um so basically in the end when you created it um always check that everywhere uh, the, the percentage is added so sales service domestic 90% that's correct sales eu zero is fine goods um zero correct reduced seven that's fine um sales of goods um domestic also 90% is fine sales of goods also zero fine export zero fine purchase sales service um Purchase service um, of domestic service, they are also 90%. And now one important thing, um, the purchase of the European Union, um, the European Union service and goods both needs to have this 19% uh, in it so basically just add here the normal um, the normal your normal percentage in the end but of course it will be reversed so reversed text good seven full 19 EU 19 perfect so we've created those now we've created those and we've created those in the end okay what we now have to do is basically just to create the metric so nothing else then we just need to combine or to say well okay which one is used what so we just need to actually create here the combination the combinations between the vat group and the item vat group so let's start with cdom so this means nothing else i just put it a little bit here and this one maybe a little bit smaller just to show you what i mean so um yeah i bah. i just quickly go back to the sales tax groups so it means just cdom we start with cdom this means in the end nothing else then we are here on this line so we just need to add here in this kind of matrix all those four codes and this is exactly down here so we just need to say well for cdom every possibility that is available is here sg full i create the new line i say sg reduced i say new line i see sg zero I create new line and I see SS sir. SS sir. Good. So this is basically it what we are doing now. So we just we just go line by line. So next CEU customers European Union can just have SGEU. So S PGEU. So PGE, you know, sorry, SGEU. SGEU and SSEU. 
SSBU. Good. So just those two, even if there are four, there are just two different kind of codes in it. For C rest of world, I can actually just add here the C S export, the S export, and basically fine. And we can already move on with the vendors. Vendor domestic, just those four. So P G full, P G reduced, P G zero. And PS, sir. Good. Okay. I'm doing now quickly the vendor rest of world because in the European Union purchase there is something special. And this one is just P imp. So just one in the end. Good. Okay. So you actually also always see here the percentages where you can check it once again. The vendor European Union. It's a little bit strange, no, not strange, it's just one small difference. We add here also the PGEU and the PSEU. So basically the same way as we did before, just based on here, just those two. But in this time you need to tick here just the box use tax, which means nothing else than AX knows well always all the time if you post something with this VET code, I need to reverse it at the same time once again. Good. So um, this was it with the VET groups. We are doing now the same for the item VET group. So means nothing else than instead of um, horizontal, we are going vertical. The other way around, of course. Instead of um, vertical, we are going horizontal. So in the item VET group, uh, we just need to add those here. All these possibilities in the end. So this means nothing else. I just make it also again a little bit smaller. I can go back to sales tax, so tax, indirect tax, sales tax, and then item sales tax groups. And we have exactly the same setup down here where you can say I'm on the full one. So I need to add here the SG full. I need to have here the SG EU. I have to add here the SX. I have to add here the PG, the PG full, full. I have to add here PG EU. PG EU plus I PG EU. And I have to add here the P import good perfect the same then for all of them so reduced so reduced rate i can go on add s g reduced the s s g e u the s export you can actually, as if you don't sell any reduced things to foreign custom, you can also leave it away, then you would end up in an error. Um, so it's, but it's also always uh, depending on you, what you, what kind of things you sell in the end. But yeah, P, G, E, U, and P, P, imp, of course, P, imp. Two, four, six should be fine. For service, let's start with zero. Add P S G zero. Then S G E U. Then S export. Then P G zero. Um, P G U plus. Boom. I add it twice, P, G, zero, and P, import, go two, four, six, that's fine. And the service rate is then S, S, sir, S, S, U, S, export, P, S, whoops, P, S, sir. P S Sir P S U 
and then the sales export and the purchase import. Good, voila. So means nothing else. We have our tax metrics actually already already created. Um, so this means in the end nothing else than one small thing is no, it's not. It's everything everything done. Um, important is basically now, as I said, those things here is customer and vendor related. This is item related. So this means on the vendor and customer mass data, those information needs to be included, respectively added. So this means nothing else than let's create quickly a new vendor. So I can go back again to vendors. We already created quite a lot of them, two. <laughs> so now the third one. So this means I just click on new. And in this case, I'm, say, I'm saying, well, um, a European Union, let's say French, French company or my French company, my French company. I tell him, well, the group is European Union. Um, that's fine. And the address in the end, always in the end, otherwise you can end up with kind of error messages. And currency is Euro. This is fine. Purchase order default doesn't matter at all. We add, of course, our payment information. So since it is a French one, he has kind of kind of a strange payment terms. Um, your UBS Euro, no cash discount. This is fine. Financial dimension, we will have a look at it later on. Plus now here, under the tab invoice you need to add here the sales tax group so this means nothing else then you will need to say well is it v u is it v domestic or is it v rest of world in this case of a french one it is of course a european union member never add here a customer one um yeah because you would end up with some problems but of course because we created two different kind of ledger posting groups, um, you would end up in an error and not with a wrong posting, which is definitely better than a wrong posting. Good. Um, I just quickly add this information also for the other ones. So the first one, the first supplier was a domestic one. So I add in here as well on the, the tab invoice, the sales tax group vendor domestic. And the Swiss one, of course, because Switzerland is not within the European Union, we are rest of the world. Good. So this means now we've added it and we are now going to create um, again um, a vendor invoice just to check how the sales tax uh, look like in the end. And if it is, if it corresponds to our sales tax metrics. So um, accounts payable again, invoices. So the things we already did. So this means just in here, we create a new purchase invoice journal. Uh, my first VAT postings, postings, good. I can go to lines and let's choose at first the domestic. So this is the domestic one. Um, blah, 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 100 and the offset account 66, possibly our expense account with the cost center purchase. Good. Now, ah, okay. The item sales tax group is now already here. That's basically fine. So uh, just make it a little bit, uh, da, 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 da. by the way, I, Compared to the first videos, I just made the resolution a little bit lower, just that you that it looks a little bit bigger. Um, but then I don't see all of the lines in here. But yeah, good. So this means nothing else. We have now um, an invoice, and AX is now always retrieving the combination. So we are on vendor side, and we have here. Just make this one green. And so if we have here, for example. The vendor domestic which we have at the moment and we say well it is um, a reduced rate then he would go and say well okay then i take the pg reduced and the pg reduced would have in the end um, a percentage of seven percent and he would post onto this vet account um, i did it wrong this should be of course two two zero 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 and the other way around actually so 
purchase is purchase is 114 of course and here One one four zero zero. Voila. Okay, much better. And he would then actually post the VAT onto this account in the end. So let's see if this is going to happen or if he is doing it correctly. So this means I can say here reduced, and this means nothing else. Then he would calculate now six point five four. Why 6.54? Because in the journal type itself, I said this amount in here is including VAT. So this means if I say 107, then the calculated sales tax will be 7 because 7 percentage, because this one that you add in here is the gross amount. Um, you can just by take, taking out a tick, you can say, okay, you want to work with the net amount. Good. So of course, we can always check also before we posted the sales tax under this button and then we see, well, he would post with this code um, with 7% totally 7 uh, of VAT. Good, so quite simple. We just say, well, okay, we now have, um, again, the same vendor. Blah, 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 119, 66. And then CC 200 and this time full, which means nothing else. And we end up with the sales tax of 19% with the PG full, of course. Now, let's see what happens if we say we have um, my first, my second vendor. The second vendor is a Swiss, the Swiss vendor. So the rest of world vendor, we say here 100 Swiss francs again on the 666 and 200. The sales tax group, the rest of world. And we add again the full rate. What does this mean? It means nothing else than he will calculate um, no sales tax, but he will add then the import. So if I click here on sales tax, then you will have the import because combination here the rest of world plus full is equal to p import with um, a zero vat amount of course it is basically important that you always have kind of a vat code because um yeah otherwise it makes it more or less impossible to reconcile the vet subledger compared to the general ledger so always put um, a VAT in it. Important is basically, you can do the setup actually that it is not possible to post without the VAT code, which definitely makes sense. Good. So this means uh, we have now the European Union vendor with VEU plus full, which means we expect actually here, um, if we just say this one here, we expect that we have PGEU and PGEU um, should be with 19% reversed tax and should post onto this account in the end. So let's check it as well. If I click on sales tax, I have PGEU plus the 19% and the sales direction is use tax. We'll see basically the um, posting right afterwards. Of course, if I would change it here to service, then also the rate or the VAT code would change so sales tax to PS EU also with 19% and then use tax. Good, um, let's post it and then we can have a look at the postings itself. So I just click on post, and if everything is fine, then it should post it without any problems, and it did. Perfect. So let's go through the vouchers itself. So, what do we expect? We expect 107 on. The vendor, of course, 100 on our cost account and 7 on the account 11400. And let's see if I click on the voucher and we have exactly this. So 100 of costs on the on the VAT receivable accounts, which is, of course, not uh, sales, but from purchase. So I did it totally, totally wrong. <laughs> also, I named it totally wrong. Uh, vendors domestic um, 107. So totally correct. So this means the second one. We have just 19%, so we expect exactly the same posting, but just with well, also with 19, of course, on the 114. Yep, 19 and 119 on the vendors. 
we have here the Swiss one, so the rest of world one with an import VAT. So we expect actually that nothing is posted, no VAT is posted, which is absolutely correct. But still, if you click here on posted sales tax, you still see that you have in the VAT subledger, you do have um, a posting and with an origin amount. So yeah, it's basically important just for the reconciliation because normally you also need to say how much did you bought from uh, the rest of world, some rest of world um, somehow. Yeah. So <laughs> look that you always have kind of a VAT code in it. So yeah, good. Um, the last one, we have the reverse tax. So we expect that it is an in and out game. Yep, absolutely right, of 19. So we had 100. The reverse tax, of course, should always use this as this as the uh, net amount and then calculate it in addition and then an in and out game. So everything went absolutely correct with these postings. Good, so this is basically the VAT logic of AX. As soon as you understand these kind of metrics, um, then it's quite simple. Just look that you always create such kind of an information in the beginning, um, because yeah, then you have something in your hands and then you know how it should work and every other guy would understand it as well. Um, of course, there can be more complex stuff like, for example, in Canada, where you have um, different kind of settlement period so for quebec a different one than for the rest of canada where you need to add where you need to post additional vat would also be possible without problems to set it up um and of course then it can be that it is even more difficult like in the us well it's not difficult but it's just huge where you honestly um honestly in, within the us i would not set it up in ax manually um, use their kind of uh, interface for example to avalera or what Ever because um, yeah, to, you, it's not possible to handle it manually. And if you're from Brazil, then you lost anyway because the VAT, the VAT is there that that complex that it is it is possible to set it up in AX, but it is unbelievably complex. Yeah. Um, if you're Swiss, then of course the distinction between um, between the material and the ser material service VAT. Um, compared to the investment VAT is also possible without any problems. Um, so yeah, so if you have any questions, you can just always add a comment and I try to um, answer it um, directly via YouTube. Good, perfect. So, <clears throat> so this was it for today. I will look that I can uh, move on tomorrow or in some, in some days again and then upload the new videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.